Hi, friends. Take two of Pat McGrath's Legendary Glow Color Bomb that I did film two days ago, but again, as you probably heard from my Natasha Denona Yucca Eyeshadow Palette video, I also filmed with the bombs on the same day. <laughs> it's all good, however, because I kept playing with the product and now I have several observations to share, which I'm excited about because yes, although I didn't get this up when the product released and all that, I think this info will serve you because if you are on the fence about the glow bomb, maybe you already have it, but you didn't think of these approaches, right? I, and I did have the pleasure of being invited to the color bomb event. Mother was there in person. Pat is such a fun spirit to be around. It's pleasant to see someone who's excited about their own product and you're like, well, why wouldn't she? Well, you know, maybe she could feel jaded or whatever. She's been in the game for a very long time, but still she brings that energy is almost like childlike, like that, that excitement and everyone she sees, she's happy to see. And it's a great vibe to be around. Although the scene for me was not for me, you know, high fashion people with a lot of the designer things and I'm just there, you know, with, with my fanny pack and my, uh, my onesie. I just wanted to see mother and the product and then I want to get out of there. And I just wanted to quickly mention, hi, future Alicia, this is the final look. You'll see how I get here in a minute. Thank you to the Pat team for giving me a discount, Alicia 20, until July, I think it is 15th. Look, it is right here. The official original note with the Alicia 20 code. I was pleasantly surprised, had no idea, was not expecting to receive a code from the event. And the amount of times it was shared, I was like, whoa. So thank you, fam. I, I appreciate you using the code and I guess it does help in showcasing my influence when it comes to Pat McGrath products. So I wanted to put this in here whilst talking about the event. So let's get back to the current Alicia and I'll see you back here in a minute. All that to say, I'm happy that I saw the products in person before the launch. And it's funny, when I first saw the leak on Instagram and read the word divine, I immediately thought blush stick because the, the word divine is used mostly for her cheek product category under the Pat McGrath Labs line. And we do now have the divine blush legendary glow color bomb a few product details a multifunctional marvel that imparts a nourishing burst of radiance to lips and cheeks this versatile formula suits a variety of skin tones ensuring the perfect touch of color every time infused with hydrating actives this must have bomb creates a glass skin like finish Ooh, does it ever the gel like texture and buildable formula provide a non-sticky non-greasy glow boosting wash of natural color. Its glossy finish imparts a lustrous radiant reflection with major moisture and lush luminosity. So glass-like, luminous, moisture, okay? We have six shades in all and I received a gift when attending the event Forbidden Fleur and Fleurotique. And many of you on Instagram when I would said that I felt bad asking for more when the team had mentioned or told me, listen, if you need anything from us, let us know. I did send a request for the Lux Quad, the Bomb Duo, and a few other shades, but it all depended on what they had at the office. So they did send me Sunkiss Seduction, which that was like the shade heavy on my radar initially. Also, they were nice to send Passion Fleur, and I did request Venetian Sunrise from the Divine Bronzer Collection. So we'll take a look at those swatches as well. Each blush stick retails for $29. You see here is packaged in pink plastic with the gold lining and you have Pat McGrath Labs here on the front. I was floored when I saw this 36 month suggested shelf life. That's not bad for a Bami product. Seven grams of product and these blush sticks are made in. Italy. Peach Lotus, Soft Peach Coral, Paradise Peony, Warm Pink Coral. Paradise Peony is the shade that the makeup artist applied on me. And you see here that I have on the cheeks with mother. Beautiful shade. I actually was surprised at how it looked on me. And that was one of the shades that I requested, but unfortunately they did not have it to send. Fleurotique, which I have on the center of my face. That is the Rich Cool Rose, Sun Kiss Seduction, the Warm Sienna, and Forbidden Fleur, the Rich 
Blackberry, which I have here higher on the cheeks. The Balm Duo I did request because this one has a little more reflectivity than the standard highlighter duo. This is in golden. And the pink packaging I thought was pretty cool. But anyway, it's okay. The Luxe Eyeshadow Quad in Passion Floor. Let me go get it. It's in the drawer. I'm not entirely sure if it's limited edition. It doesn't say here on the card. The Balm Duo, however, is limited edition. But this is Passion Floor. We're looking at one shimmer, two metallics, and one matte. I thought about Paranormal from La Vie and Rose when I saw this matte. Plum Nocturne. But Plum Nocturne is a little more red leaning. And Paranormal is definitely more mauve cool leaning and of course venetian sunrise from the divine bronzer collection i held off on getting this initially because i was like listen friend i have three bronzers and they had mentioned that i was supposed to attend that event as well but the contact person got there was a new hire my email got lost whatever it's fine we got the venetian sunrise now for these blush sticks i've used them since i received my gift from the event on Wednesday, last Wednesday. Today is Monday. I have been using these sticks since then with several different scenarios. Scenario number one, and I have footage of me here applying, I believe it's Sun Kiss Deduction on top of the House Lab Skin Tech Foundation. Now what I found extraordinary, and I didn't mind this because this was on a day where it was like 80 degrees, it was like a, a hot wave type of a day. It wasn't supposed to be this hot early in June, okay? In the gym, trained for like two hours, and at the end of seven to eight hours, I did like how my skin looked. I didn't know how I would feel initially when I saw this product, it being dewy, radiant, because we had discussed this, the trade-off with a dewy product is you get enhanced texture on the skin, right? The shinier something is, that will emphasize any type of, of texture that you have. And people were like, listen, I'm all about the soft matte look because it is more blurring in nature. For example, Danessa's Blurring Balm Flushed Powder product, which I have in Bellini and Jubilee. Love those shades. The Glow Color Balm, definitely on the other end of the spectrum. But what I think unique about the color balm is that yes it's balmy so it's not going to have that same robust serving of color like the Danessa or even the Phyto Surgeon Skin Spark Blush Balm product but that's what I love about it. I appreciate its versatility and the fact that you can get different gradients of color or different grades of color depending on the foundation you apply this on. So as I mentioned before, this on top of the house labs will imbue more of like that light watercolor flushed effect, that barely there touch of color that you can build whether you slide the stick on your cheek or you use a brush to pounce on the color. And the way it goes on, despite its like creamy texture, despite its shiny creamy texture it's extraordinary i absolutely love it and here on the demo i just wanted to experiment listen how will this look if i apply the blush stick first and then the foundation around it well let me tell you i apply forbidden fleur on the higher points of the hollows of my cheeks with sun kiss deduction near the center of my face with the house labs around used my makeup forever foundation brush in 109 and let me tell you i loved how this turned out it was the perfect dose of color and if you're one of those people that like to apply blush heavier on the center of your face across the nose and like right under the eyes this is the perfect formula to achieve that look with because sometimes when I try to do that with the final surgery of the Nessa, it looks a little... <laughs> It could look a little heavy and fine. I then use concealer or leftover foundation on the brush to just pounce on the border so it could kind of look softer overall. This though, you could go and it will be fine. It blends like a dream, especially if you use like the freckled dock technique because again, the dose of color is not heavy initially. So you have the room to create that intensity and it's, it's in your hands because, oh my I like it. I like it a lot. And I understand how you might feel, fam. Listen, I am a Pat McGrath fan. I have a lot of Pat McGrath videos. I've met her twice, been invited to the events. So I am biased in that respect, 100%. And if you want an opinion from someone who is not me, 
I totally get it. But from using this product as extensively as I have, playing with it, under different circumstances, wearing it when it's super hot and on a day like today that's not as hot. I have, a, I have a better grasp about my feeling towards this product and I do like it more than what I had thought initially how I would feel about it and this is special this is one of the more unique cream blush formulas I now have in my collection and with that let's go through these swatches I first have Forbidden Fleur which is the rich berry shade this is what it looks like and you can see I hope so through the camera that texture like just ooh, just creamy and the shine too, you're like, ooh, it's shiny, texture. Yes, it is, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna get to the, uh, to the examples, okay? Fleurotique is the rich, cool rose. Initially, a color that wasn't on my radar, but I do love how it looks. It's soft on the center of the face. It is cool, but I don't mind. It works out. It has like that, the texture, delivers that flush of color that we are trying to achieve with blush that we're if it happened on our own you know what i'm saying because a lot of people i think feel apprehensive about blush since they want it to look natural and sometimes it doesn't depending on the application the formula the brush you use blah, blah, blah. this okay sun kiss seduction is your warm sienna shade this is right up my alley you already know okay if i were to pick one more it either would be peach lotus or paradise peony right the pink coral or the peach coral those i feel very summery in nature and you know what if it goes on sale down the line or maybe i'll just bite the bullet and get one i i'm grateful that at least i have three without paying right so the least i i should just get the one, okay? Let me quickly swatch Passion Fleur. We first have Skin Show Pink Dawn and Rose Fire Glow. So Skin Show Pink Dawn, Rose Fire Glow. Skin Show Pink Dawn is like, it shows up more pink on the inner corner. Of course, was all on the demo that I couldn't upload maybe i'll do it again for this video and then we have plum nocturne and i believe sienna moonlight so here is plum nocturne and sienna moonlight sienna moonlight is absolutely gorgeous i love the shine so this is the most shiny shine here out of passion fleur i think a nice arrangement of shades definitely speaks to the overall theme of the collection and we'll quickly swatch venetian sunrise oh my goodness i might just have to dedicate a video to this or maybe we'll do venetian sunrise on one eye and passion fleur on the other first up we have nude solaris and sunset taupe sunset taupe was the matte I was eyeing when I first saw this palette online right here. Oh, this color. Straight out of Byrito's Remembrance. You know, the rosy browns, okay? And lastly, we have what I just read this for crying out loud. Velvet Eclipse and Gilded Glamour. This is like the shiny showstopper shade. My goodness, it's drier, but because of that, it's gonna have a lot more reflectivity on the eye. We'll get into those demos shortly, but just so you can see what I got on the face, we'll get into the glow bomb demos, some foundation demos as well, and that means it's time for you to come in a little closer. That's enough. I have Danessa's Blurring Balm on with Forbidden Fleur and Fleurotique with the Balm Duo in Golden. This is what I discovered. If you want a more robust serving of color from these blush sticks, it will behoove you to apply this on a more matte foundation. And it just occurred to me today because I've been applying this on the House Labs and the House Labs is more of like a natural finish, you know, the skincare makeup hybrid type of a formula that's going to leave more of a radiant finish on the skin. Sure, depending on where you sit on the skin type spectrum will maybe determine some something else but generally if you're going to apply do on do the color richness won't be as robust as if you were to apply do on matte and if you're like well is the stick going to move around the foundation no no not at all i was surprised 
with how much color I have now. I still have the Danessa Balm now. Just so you can see, I'll swipe Sun Kiss Seduction right here. You're like, oh my goodness. Just look at that glide, how easy it was to get on the skin. You can see the shine initially. If you're freaking out, I understand. No fear. Let's get the mirror and the brush. I'm using my Sonia G mini base and just pouncing, pulling, getting it on the skin. You see what I mean? Because it's so lightweight, you can get away with that application and it looks like that natural sun-kissed or slightly burnt look to the skin. And which is why I adore sun kiss Seduction and again, applying this as just liberally as I did, not worrying about it showing too much, you know what I'm saying? I think, however, if you want to build, it nice to go from stick to brush to skin, right? This is how I would build the color up. And you can see Sun Kiss Seduction coming a little more forward, y'all. Yeah. You could then apply loose powder on top of this, 100%. That's going to dial down the shine a little more. But if you use the right loose powder, like either the Pat's own Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Loose Powder, the Shiseido Synchro Silk Loose Powder I used that the other day. I got it right here. Why don't we try it out? Lightly dusting. I like to use a brush. I think a puff will lay down too much. So let's just lightly dust here. And it will still have a nice finish to the skin, right? But it's gonna dial down the shine a little bit. And you can see how it, did, it doesn't disrupt the foundation, it just finds itself there. Let's go in now with the Bioderma, but I just want you to see the texture of uh, Forbidden Fleur. I did not set this after applying. Forbidden Fleur with Fleurotique on top of the Danessa Balm. No setting. And this is post-workout, by the way. It was upper day one. And here is Sun Kiss Seduction after everything has been applied earlier. But I just love how my skin looks. It, it still looks fresh. You know, not overly made up, but just right. The look that, ooh, it's so hard to achieve with makeup. You know what I mean? That no makeup look that people be chasing, you know, it's, uh, it's a thing. It's a thing that we want, but it's hard sometimes depending on the product we're using. All right, we got most of it off. One side, skin tech. The other side, blurring bomb. Let's do side one with the skin tech from House Labs. This is how I like to apply it. <laughs> I just like to do the bare minimum from the pump bottle. I'm gonna swirl it all around. And then we get some uh, concealer here as well, you know, so things can look a little more even. And on the other side, we'll apply the Yummy Blurring Balm in number six from Danessa using the same brush. And I like to just pounce it on because I think that's one of the best ways to get nice coverage, but even coverage. So here's a house labs. You can see from the light reflecting, it, it leaves behind more of a radiant finish. And the Danessa Balm, which is one of my go-tos for the season for obvious reasons, how it uh, successfully combats excess oil and sweat and leaves more of a soft matte finish, right? So this is the difference. And I've been toggling between these two since like March. And my Danessa number six, I, I've hit Pam, but I'm gonna continue to use it until it's done. Let's now go in with Sun Kiss Seduction. Well, you know what? Let me do Forbidden Fleur first. I'll do Forbidden Fleur on the higher point of my cheeks. And I like to first go in with the striking. So this is on the house lab side and this is on the Danessa side. For consistency sake, I will use the same Makeup Forever brush. I'll start high on the cheekbones and I'll bring it down just enough so it can wrap around the leftover around the center of my face. And isn't Forbidden Floor so pretty? Initially, I wasn't gonna get this shade. Shame on me. Berries, you can't go wrong with Berry. For the same reason why I love the Gucci Matte Luminous Blush in Warm Berry. And I did apply a little bit of Warm Berry, forgot to mention that, over everything. And here is now on the Danessa side. 
And because the Danessa Blurring Balm is more matte, you see there's more adherence. It's not going to blend out in the same fashion. And I think if you want more of a robust serving of color from these blush sticks, it might be more advantageous for you to use a more matte, soft matte foundation initially. Again, here is the House Lab side with Forbidden Fleur and the Danessa Blurring Balm skin side with Forbidden Fleur. Now let's get into Fleurotique on one side and Sunkissed Seduction on the other. Why not? I like to apply this shade. Well, you know what? Let me go in from Stick to Brush, which is what the makeup artist did. She used like a stipple type of a brush, which, you know, go ahead. I think any type of synthetic or synthetic natural combination will work. And here is the finish of the Glow Bomb, right? It's going to give you that shine. But I remember on Friday when it was hot and my skin was just doing what it was doing. <laughs> doing. I loved how my skin looked. I love that there was dew and it was radiant, how it wasn't completely matte. I was embracing it that day, but I know that's not for everyone. So just know, no matter how you manipulate it, this is going to give you glow. It's in the product name. You don't like glow, you will have to set this, okay? Or start with a matte foundation first. Going in now in the same manner, on the Danessa side. And I think from just my experiment this morning is going to have a lot less do, right? So because a house lab is already starting from a, a high sheen point, okay, you're going to get more glow when applying it on a foundation like the house labs. But if you apply it on something like the Danessa, I don't think you get as much. You still get, you still get the glow, right? You still get the shiny shine, but it's a little less, it's more turned down, don't you think? Let me know down below if you feel I have completely lost my mind. And here you see, I'm just taking it under the eyes, which you can do with this product because again, it's like watercolor in nature is translucent, it's a bomb, right? Lip glosses, bombs have that tint. It's like a tint, it's giving you tint on those portions of your face that might not have the same effect if you were applying powder blush. An advantage to using a product like the Glow Color Bomb is because of its finish, ideal to go in with highlighter, especially the duo stick. So I go in with Golden and because the skin is like somewhat prepped from the Glow Bomb application, the, I'm telling you, it just melts right in there, okay? Just let it do its thing. Get it in the brows, you know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, look at that. The shine, fam. It's great. I love this for summer. Again, I know it's not going to be for everybody. I understand, but listen. Look, look at my, look at my face. Let's do one more demo. I'll leave the house lab's side intact and go in with Hourglass, which I would hold in a similar category to the Danessa Blurring Balm, simply because I consider the ambient soft glow to be more matte than the, the skin tech. You know, it got that filtering property about it. Much like the, uh, the Blurring Balm is blurring. Just a, a drop, half a drop actually, not even that. Okay. A little goes a long way with this sucker. Taking that all over. Okay, I was a little stingy with that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We got, we got it on. This is in shade 11, which is the neutral undertone. Unsure how this will work over the summertime, but I could, I tend to mix foundations anyway you know, so it won't be too huge of an issue. So here we have our ambient soft glow side, and I think you can suspect or see the similar finish at least behind to the blurring bomb. Now with sun kiss seduction, I'm just taking this all away from top to bottom. So okay, we'll start there first. Same makeup forever brush, pouncing it in, and this color is just 
it's absolutely perfect. Warm sienna, you can't go wrong. This is like my shade with the terracotta clay burnt. <sighs> and if we want more, take it just straight from the stick, start pouncing. But see how easy it just disperses on the skin? It doesn't pick up the foundation. It just finds itself where you put it. You know what I'm saying? And if you want, you could do this thing. It's just, I, I can't get enough. This is such a great product. It's so great. Super season appropriate. And, you know, it might convert you. I don't think it, if you are fully committed to the soft matte blurring thing, this might not convert you because I understand if you're like, listen, friend, I love you, but I ain't going there, all right? We're not looking dewy ever. It's converting me a little bit. It, it is. I just wanted to put it out there. Now, here's something we can do, though. Layering a divine blush over the legendary glow. And when I mentioned this to Pat, I was like, oh, all the gradients. She was like, I was like, it was, <laughs> she's so much fun. I just want to hang out with her and do all the things. I am taking a squirrel brush simply because I don't want the creaminess to wear down my on my squirrel bristles. So I'm taking Paradise Venus softly over Sun Kiss Deduction. And that's going to set it a little bit, right? It's going to give you more color too. If you wanted some little something more than Sun Kiss Deduction, even though you applied it on a more matte foundation and you got the Divine Blush Powders, friend knock yourself out get it on there look how beautiful that is because it's a demi matte finish so even though it's a powder it's not gonna completely turn down the glow if you still want some to be present and here we can do something like nude venus nude venus is one of my top peach shades out of my entire collection and here on the center over Fleur Dique, we could have used Divine Rose as well, which might have been a more fitting matchup, but it's okay. Back in with Golden, of course. We can't leave the cheekbones alone. Oh yes, That's, that is just beautiful. Wider shot of Forbidden Fleur and Fleur Dique on one side, on the other where we applied on the Hourglass Sun Kiss Seduction with Paradise Venus, and on the Fluorotique side, Nude Venus. Look at my skin. Look, look at my skin. And I got texture. I got a hairy face too. It doesn't look that bad. I, I like, I like it. Now that we've gone ham with these blushes, a quick break, applying my primer. I might have to do an updated quad video family because these are, uh, these are making me think, you know what I'm saying? I would definitely still keep Iconic Illumination and Nocturnal Nirvana in my top five. You know, those quads, you can't touch them. The Blitz Astral Quad, forget it. Uh, let's get into Passion Fleur. Plum Nocturne is a great matte. When I apply this, when the card wasn't working, I loved how it looked solo, right? It, it's going to give you a robust serving of color, but the matte formula itself, I think, flows nicely on the skin. Although I would recommend that you use a fluffier brush just so you could get, or rather have a little more control over the gradient. And I'm just gently building the color here through my crease with my jumbo blender, pouncing on more on the outer lid so it could appear a little more robust there. Smaller brush, carrying it down on the outer fourth and just fluffing it further. Yes. Mm. So this is very smoky. If you don't want this much smoke, you might wanna go in with a metallic first and then lightly fluff the edges with Plum Noctor not to completely overtake the look, or you'll use Plum Noctor just as your shadow liner moment. You could do that as well. Definitely got to go in with Sienna Moonlight for sure. This has beautiful shine and I love that lavender tone to it. It's like a lavender taupe. 
so pretty. And following up with a shader brush to clean up the under arc area. Yes. Rose Fire Glow doesn't have as much sparkly arcly as Sienna Moonlight, but I want to place it here on the greater inner lid because I think that's a lovely gradient from the coppery pink into that lavender taupe. And then Skin Show Pink Glow on the inner corner because this has a lot of pink in it and I kind of love it. Have your concealer brush on standby to stamp away any of the sparklies from Sienna Moonlight, which inevitably will happen just because of the shade's texture. And I'm pouncing through some Plum Nocturne to clean up the edges of that application. Smaller pencil brush for Rose Fire Glow on the lower inner corner to mimic what we got going on at the top on the inner lid. Carrying down a little more Plum Nocturne here because we love this color. Yes, yes, yes. Now on the Venetian Sunrise side. Ooh, I cannot wait. I haven't even tried this yet. It's fifth and breath in. Now with Sunset Taupe. I, I know I'm gonna love Sunset Taupe. Right here. Oh yes. This is the color. This is the color. I love these beigey brown, like, oh my gosh. I think this release, this, I forgot, did Divine, bronzer release when Byredo release and I was like feeling bad about buying this quad when I had have rather remembrance just this on its own with the velvet eclipse on the lash line I absolutely adore it I'm feeling I am feeling a halo eye situation let's dab velvet eclipse first on the outer lid Definitely need to pick up a smaller brush for the inner lid because I think Jumbo Blender will be far too large and will just place too much product there. In terms of the, the blendability, this mats are good. I would say that Pat's pretty consistent with the mats, but I, you know, it's nice to have one. That's just killer. I'm using my smaller Sonya G Traditions Trio brush because it's much softer than the Jumbo Blender. And I'll have a lot more control placing velvety clips on the inner lid without it getting too crazy. And I'll carry it through Sunset Taupe. Okay, that looks pretty. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> Gilded Glamour on the center just overlapping velvet clips that is shiny holy moly that's pretty mm. mm -hmm -hmm. i'm pulling down sunset taupe a lot here because i want this to look hazy and then we'll follow with velvety clips a little bit here this is where it gets tricky with the halo eye right because when you apply dark shadow on the inner parts of the eye it does close it so it depends, I think, on your eye shape if you want to go that route. There are no rules. It's more so what you want to do and how you prefer your eyeshadow to look. That will determine those decisions. Because my eyes are not small, I can get away with that. But I understand you might have to hold off on the inner corner application, you know, if you have smaller eyes than me. So, so you got eyes to see. So you can see the eyeshadow at the end of this look. Gilded Glamour right down the center. It's like, you know, we're crying sparkles. And I, you know, I'm taking it pretty low. I'm taking it pretty low. Nude Solaris, now on the inner corner. Yes, not as shiny as Gilded, but it's not meant to be. The, the shimmer shade is, is purposefully low key for a reason. Ooh, it's time to apply some lashes and I'll be right back. So here are the final looks using the glow color bombs in Forbidden Floor, Floral Deek, and Sunkiss Deduction, as well as applying Passion Floor on one eye and Venetian Sunrise on the other, just to see them in action. The consensus is friends, I adore this product. I think it's fluid versatile and 
it has such a great learning curve. It's great for beginners, but also great for more advanced makeup professionals and even enthusiasts in opening the possibility to experiment with this texture, with different types of finishes in the complexion category. And I think it's fantastic just to apply on your skin without foundation at all because it has I, I think like again that skincare quality about it where it doesn't feel like makeup but it does have color to it and yes it's going to give you a glow but I think it's nice to have that finish during the summertime when it's hot and humid you know you can try to fight it by the the blotting powders and even the Danessa Balm products that combat that and many of you had said those products made a huge difference for your complexion when it is hot and humid and preventing your makeup from melting off your face. I think it's nice to maybe combine a balmy product with something that's soft matte and see where they can meet in the middle. And it might be a fantastic discovery for you. Having this light blush look, not too much, but not too little, especially if you struggled with blush application, no matter what the formula, the tool, it always looks just too artificial on your face. The glow color bombs will hold your hand. They will not look like overly done. It truly delivers that flush look that happens naturally, but what we try to achieve with makeup that can perhaps prove to be challenging at times, the glow color bomb will take you there. And as far as the quads, I do love the quads. I have to use them more, more extensively to get a better handle on their color stories. And perhaps that will lead us to a hmm, updated top five Pat McGrath Labs quad list. Even though I just uploaded one, it's okay. Maybe I'll do one in the fall. If another quad doesn't pop up, it'll be an updated version that I'll be happy to reconsider considering the two new additions to my collection. Let me know fam if you picked up any of the glow color bombs, what shades, have you been liking it, some experimentations that you held yourself. Would love to share with the fam. I'll see you down there in those comments and until then that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial of Pat McGrath Extravaganza or an updated top five quad list. Take care and I will see you again soon.